In today's video, we're going to be covering over a unique piece of military hardware that the US made in the 1950s, which was responsible for the Soviets embarking on a series of designs that would be able to fire a nuclear shell over the battlefield using guns, mortars and recoilless rifles, with one of the designs being the 2B1 Orca, a vehicle that I have covered on this channel previously. The military hardware in question that was built by the US was the 280mm M65 atomic cannon, a artillery piece that would hold the distinguishment of being the only conventional artillery piece in the US arsenal that fired a live nuclear shell. The history of the atomic cannon started at the tail end of the 1940s, with the US Army tasking the Picatinny Arsenal to create a nuclear capable artillery piece as, at the time, the main method of delivering a nuclear payload was the use of bombers, which was in the purview of the US Air Force branch. The US Army branch, however, was seeking to not be reliant on Air Force as, at the time, it was only the Air Force that had the capabilities of delivering nuclear ordnance on the battlefield. One of the engineers' tasks at making the atomic cannon was Robert Schwartz. Robert Schwartz created the initial design, which was essentially a scaled up version of the 240mm M1 howitzer. With the initial design of the atomic cannon, borrowing quite heavily from the German K5 283mm railway guns which the atomic cannon most certainly looked like it was yanked straight off the railway guns. But this artillery piece wouldn't be mounted on a railway system. Instead, a pair of heavy-duty prime movers would be used for the transport of the piece on normal roads, with one of them being located on each side. The design would be given the go-ahead by the Pentagon via the timely intervention of Samuel Feltman for manufacturer. The company assigned for the manufacturer of the atomic cannon was the Waterley Arsenal, which would ultimately manufacture a total of 20 units. During this time, the first atomic cannon that was built was given the nickname of Abel Arnie, with the Arnie part of the nickname being a reference to the two K5 railway guns that fired upon US soldiers invading the Italian beaches of Anzo during Operation Shingo. The overall specifications of the atomic cannon was that it had a gun calibre of 280mm. The official firing range of the cannon was around 20 miles, thanks to its 55 degrees of gun elevation though there is a source that details an army veteran stationed at Okinawa, where he reports that the actual maximum range of the atomic cannon was actually around 35 miles, near double the range of the officially stated range. Though I can't be certain if this is actually true or not for now, as there's not that much other sources that corroborate this army veteran though this would not be out of the realm of possibility for the gun. The overall rate of the gun when in place was around 47 tonnes. The weight of the two prime movers was around collectively 36.3 tonnes, bringing the transporting weight of the gun and vehicles to around 83 tonnes. Powering the two prime movers was a 375 horsepower engine within each vehicle, allowing the gun to be transported at a maximum speed of 35 miles per hour on road. But considering the long length of the gun mounted on the two vehicles actually made the turning circle of the gun rather large. This would result in a few reports of the transports actually damaging buildings as they attempt to move through the turns and corners of streets. The project proceeded quite smoothly, with one of the atomic cannons being made either just before or just shortly after the turn of 1953, which was just in time for the inauguration of Dwight David Eisenhower 
as the 34th President of the United States, where it would make its first appearance. The inauguration was extremely elaborate for a inauguration of a president at the time, with around 22,000 servicemen and women along with various military hardware, as well as 5,000 civilians also taking part in the parade. Around 50 floats, 65 musical units, 350 horses, 3 elephants, an Alaskan dog team with the show being completed with the inclusion of the atomic cannon. Another atomic cannon would be completed in time for the testing of the artillery pieces at the Nevada Desert on May the 25th of 1953, where the first and only nuclear shell would be test fired in the US. The nuclear shell that it fired was a W9 nuclear shell that weighed around 800 pounds with a nuclear yield of around 15 kilotons, which was around the same yield as the new boy bomb that was dropped over Hiroshima. This test was attended by numerous people from the American, British and Canadian militaries that were eager to see the results of and after the firing of the gun. Abel Arnie would then later be renamed to Atomic Arnie in celebrations of the successful firing of the atomic cannon. After the testing was completed, with the army now having in its arsenal a nuclear capable artillery piece that they can decide to call upon without having to rely on the Air Force for delivery of nuclear orders, and so a total of 20 atomic cannons that costed around $800,000 per piece would be built with two of them already being made beforehand, with the one that fired the nuclear shell being given the nickname of Atomic Arnie, whilst the backup that was made just in case of failure was also given the name of Sad Sack, and these guns were shipped across the world to numerous military bases in Europe and Korea, with the locations of the guns being continuously shifted around to prevent detection from enemy intelligence, with the said locations being kept as a closely guarded secret, with only a small handful of people n knowing where all the guns were stationed. However, the guns would only have a short service life, with all of the guns being retired in 1963 due to a few reasons. One of them would be the inventions of new tactical nuclear missiles that were much smaller and easier to transport, as well as the deployment of ballistic missiles that had a range that far outstrips the official range of the atomic cannon of 20 miles, and even the unofficial range of 35 miles. Plus the development of nuclear shells that could be fired from 155mm and 203mm artillery pieces, which was far smaller and lighter than the atomic cannon, and as a result, it didn't require as much as a logistics line and could be transported over more rougher terrain than the atomic cannon, and so, after being taken out of service, a number of artillery pieces would be scrapped, but at least seven of them still survive to this day, with both Atomic Army and South Sack still remaining. Within regards to the latter two, there would be something of a US Army blunder, with the transportation of the cannon after the Nevada test. Atomic Army would actually go missing, with the US Army not knowing where it went. This came about during the 10th anniversary of the firing of the Atomic Cannon. When it was noted that the serial number identification indicated that the gun located at Fort Seal was actually the backup gun, Sazak, and not Atomic Army, that they originally thought it was. And so there would be a subsequent worldwide search to track down where Atomic Army was, which at this time was now called AWOL Army. But due to the fact that the locations of the atomic cannons that were deployed was classified and only a few people know all the locations where the artillery pieces would be stationed. 
It wouldn't be until the very next year when Atomic Arnie was tracked down to a remote site in Germany whilst performing its duties. The gun would then be shipped back to the US, but during the transportations of the cannon, it slid off a mountain road, killing two soldiers in the process. But it was still recovered and shipped back to Fort Sill, where she sits to this very day. Sad Sack was then sent to the Smithsonian Museum, where it also remains today. As always, thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more future content. If you have a question, write it down in the comments section down below. Also consider following me on other websites like Rumble and BitChute. Links are down in the description below. I hope you all have a good day and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.